And the biggest single issue, of course, is sustainability. And I mean that in the widest sense. I don't just mean the sustainability of our planet. I mean the sustainability of your family and your children, of your marriage, of your relationships, of your physical health, of your emotional well-being, of your very soul. These are profound things that touch us when we think about the future. Um, and, uh, but within the sustainability concern, which is the third millennial concern, of course, the global warming is the big one. And global warming, whatever you may think about the science, you may not be impressed by it. I am. I think the science is correct. I think there's a risk we may be wrong about the science. But you know what? Even if, we, if there is a risk that we're wrong, it's the only insurance policy we have against it uh, uh, being right is to take action now. <coughs> so even if countries are skeptics, they are going to be forced to come into line. And that's a re we're seeing that particularly in America. I'm seeing many people who would still say they think 90% the science is wrong. But even if it's 10% possibly right, then we have to have insurance against it. And that means we have to take huge action. And global warming and everything connected with it happens to be the biggest new market opportunity that you as a conglomerate could possibly be faced with. Uh, it doesn't matter where you're looking whether it's a new process in the production of textiles where, uh, that uses less water and less energy, uh, whether uh, it's a new process in the, in the, uh, in the, in the aluminium rolling industry, uh, whether it's in telco itself, uh, whether it's in banking and financial services, whether it's in the way that you actually transport your goods and using a product exchanges, whatever, however, and on top of that, an unbelievably large and varied opportunity to create new products and services which allow everyone else to save energy. So it's not just a rolling process for aluminium that uses 50% less energy, but it's a technology which you created for that aluminium rolling plant, which happens to be relevant to one of the largest car companies in the world that's using it to roll other products. It could be an innovation in textiles, in the use of chemicals, uh, that has a radical op uh, opportunity comes out of it. And you think, hey, this is a product we could sell. And you will see hundreds and hundreds of these things. And, of course, uh, it raises a big question about whether there's opportunities for massive new investment on a much bigger scale than we have seen so far by a conglomerate like this, it's simply in alternative energies, in, in energy-saving devices, and just about anything and everything connected with this enormously important trend. And this trend will haunt the whole of the next 35 years of our corporate world. It will affect every single business unit uh, that you can possibly imagine. And even if you operate in a country where the regulations are few, if you're selling up the value chain, you will find that those buying from you are inheriting your carbon footprint and they have to add your carbon footprint to theirs. It gets welded into their annual report, and then they get slaughtered later on in Bonn or Cologne or Madrid or um, Brisbane or Shanghai, and also in Delhi. So these things are extremely important. Um, and we will see, I am certain of this, new political alliances at the most senior level between China and India on a whole range of issues which have a moral force about them. And if China and India were to join forces, imagine that authority, to be able to say, we stand here representing three, almost three billion citizens in this world, and our two countries plus one or two other partnerships. And this is the way we think the world should go. This will have a credibility um, a moral quality about it, which will command global attention. And I believe you will see these kinds of positionings transform our world.